Hello and welcome back to Canvas classes. Now I've already given you these three questions of the GE advanced, right? So this is the practice session. I'll be discussing solution to the three problems that I've given to you. And do not worry about the level of the question because we will be having a mixed level of questions. Like uh, it is not that we will be doing physical chemistry first, then organic, then inorganic. We'll be doing mixed concept. Some of the question will be tougher ones. Some of the ones will be moderate level ones because we have to maintain a balance. So in the beginning, I do not want to discourage you. So that is why we'll start smooth, right? Now the first question, a solution of polystyrene in benzene contains 10 gram per liter polystyrene. So benzene is a solvent, polystyrene is a solute. Fine, that's a solution. And because polystyrene and benzene, they will like dissolve easily. So we can assume that maybe they are forming an ideal solution, but let's not assume that. Okay, they've already given it. So that's great. Okay, because they have similar kind of interactive intermolecular forces. That is why we can assume that it is forming an ideal solution. Now, the equilibrium height of the column of solution, density of which is given to you, in the osmometer corrected for the capillary rises 11.6 cm at 25 degrees Celsius. What is exactly this information? Why is it given to you? To calculate osmotic pressure. Through the osmot osmometer, we can calculate pi. How do we do that? We know that the formula of pi is equal to I C R T. And because there is no association or dissociation shown by the solute, you know, this polystyrene, is not undergoing any kind of association or dissociation. So I is basically one. What is C? Concentration number of mole upon volume. What is number of mole? Given weight upon molar weight. So this can be written as given weight upon molar weight into volume into RT. Now we need to calculate what is the number average molar mass of the polystyrene. So molar mass. Okay. So this is unknown. Pi is also unknown. So we have two unknown in this given equation. So we need to calculate at least one. So from the given data, we need to find pi. Okay, we need to calculate the value of pi so that given weight, we already know. Molar mass, it is unknown. Volume, we know the data about that. RT, we already know the data about that. Okay, so let's start solving it. Okay, so in this equation, you can simply write pi. How do we calculate pi? We also know that pi is equal to rho g h. And in this question, the data about height of the capillary is given the capillary rise. So pi is equal to rho g h use the formula. And now be careful about the units. The density is 0 0.88 gram per centimeter cube. Okay, height is 11.6 centimeter. Fine, both are in centimeter. And what is G? This is 9.8 meter per second square. So if you're using meter here, then you have to convert this also in meters and also the density into proper SI unit like kilogram per meter cube. So rather than gram per centimeter cube, we have to convert it into kilogram per meter cube. How do we do that? By multiplying it with thousand. Okay. So pi is equal to density is 0 0.88 into multiply by 1000, 10 raised to power 3. Now you can write kilogram per meter cube. Okay, rho into g, 9.8 meter per second square. Height is 0 0.116 meter. So you will calculate pi from this data. What will be the units of pi? So when you are using all the SI units, the pi is basically pressure. So what are the SI unit of pressure? Pascal. So you will get the value in Pascals. So on calculation, you will get 1000 Pascal or you simply write, simply write 10 raised to power 3 Pascal. So now pi is known to you. Okay. Now use this value, substitute this value in this formula and you can easily calculate the molecular weight. Okay. So that is done. Now do not ask me, sir, what is the given weight and uh, volume? Already given to you 10 gram per liter. So the volume of solution, you take it as one liter and the given weight of the solute is 10 grams. Okay. So put the data, calculate the answer. The answer is going to be first option. Next question number two, the most appropriate reason for the larger number of oxidation states exhibited by the actinoids 
then the corresponding length and height. Now this question is directly uh, from the NCRT. Okay, from the NCRT you can simply search in the article 8.6.3, the oxidation states of actinides. So there is the first line. It is written there is a greater range of oxidation states shown by actinides. Okay, because lanthanides do not show larger number of like a variety of oxidation state, but actinides show a greater range of oxidation states, which is in part attributed to the fact that 5F, 6D, and 7S. Okay, they are of comparable energy. So simply write 5F, 6D, and 7F. They are of comparable energies. That means the energy gap between these levels is very small. So due to that, electrons can easily jump across. Okay, from this to this, from this to this. Okay, so because of this easy shifting or jumping of electrons, we can get multiple oxidation states. Okay, so more energy difference between 5F and 6D. No, that is wrong. Lesser energy difference between 5F and 6D orbitals. Then between 4F and 5D, yes, because it's 4F and 5D, it is for lanthanides. This is for actinides. So in lanthanides, the gap, the energy gap is not very small, but in actinides, the energy gap is very small. So that is the true reason. Next question, rank the following in the order of increasing value of the equilibrium constant for hydration. Now in this case, hydration is basically a nucleophilic attack. It's a nucleophilic addition, right? It's a nucleophilic addition. So, this carbonyl carbon, the greater the electrophilic character of this carbon, faster the nucleophilic addition. Now, in this case, in third one, on both sides, there is too much of steric hindrance. So, attack of nucleophile is limited because of the steric hindrance. Secondly, both are donating group. So because of the donating group on both sides, this carbon is not very electrophilic. So that means the chances of nucleophilic attack are even slimmer. But in one and two, because they are having some angle strain, this has greater angle strain, right? So this has greater angle strain because of the 60 degree angle. So when you actually do a nucleophilic attack and uh, complete the hydration, it is converted into this form. So from original sp2 hybridized carbon, now it is sp3. So in sp2, the ideal angle should be 120, right? But it was 60. So there is a great difference. But in sp3, ideal angle is 109.8, but actually is around 60. So difference is a little lesser than before. So the angle strain has eased a little bit. So that is why we can say in this case, there is a greater chance of hydration. In this case, there is angle strain, but not that much. So the two will be the having highest reactivity because of the maximum angle strain. One will be a little less reactive and the three will be least reactive. Because three, first of all, there is no not much electrophilic character of this carbon. Secondly, because of the steric factor also, nucleophile cannot attack easily. Okay, so the answer will be second option. Okay, so I hope the first three questions are clear to you and uh, whatever you want to know about this course or any other courses, just let me know in the comment section and the dropper batch for 2023 is starting from 1st August. Download the Canvas Classes app and join the Warrior batch and you can also join the subscription model that is going to be launched today. Okay. Thank you. Don't forget to download the Canvas Classes app. Thank you. And do share it if you find it useful.